Hi, I am Dr. Sunil Jo, the Chief Consultant and the Corporate Trainer of IPSA Solutions Limited. I am here with a section on Bloom's Taxonomy. As we know, Bloom's Taxonomy is said to be a principal component in the teaching and learning process. So from the perspective of a teacher, the Bloom's Taxonomy is something of vital importance. The main focus of this section is to familiarize the teacher with a conceptual idea on Bloom's taxonomy. Here, going to the agenda of this section, we'll be having a segment on the process of learning, how learning takes place in an individual. Then we'll be going into the different domains of Bloom's taxonomy, such as cognitive domain, psychomotor domain, and affective domain. And we'll be going into detail of the different levels of learning in the cognitive domain and how this learning happens in each levels and also we'll be having a talk on the different hierarchy and how this hierarchy works so here we will start with what is learning learning is a process of bringing out certain desirable behavioral change in an individual by acquisition or modification of knowledge, skills, and values. So this statement is a very beautiful statement which reveals what is learning. Here it implies two major aspects. The first one is that learning is a deliberate process which focuses on certain desirable behavioral change. And it is this desirable behavioral change, we term it as learning objectives. And when it is viewed from a learner's point of view, we will restate it as learning outcome. The second aspect which has been implied in this statement is that learning is something which happens through the acquisition or modification of knowledge, skills and values. So here, the knowledge is something that nurtures the mental activities of the learner. And the skill is something that strengthens the motor related activities of the learner. And the values is that which fine tunes the appreciation or the mannerism of an individual. And here, as we have earlier mentioned, the expected goal of a curriculum in terms of demonstrable skill or knowledge is termed as learning objectives. So here we will look into what is Bloom's taxonomy. The Bloom's taxonomy gives a very authentic architecture into the process of learning. Literally taxonomy means classification. Hence Bloom's taxonomy is basically a hierarchical classification of various levels of learning in three domains, namely cognitive, affective and psychomotor. The cognitive domain is related to the intellectual activities of the learner, while affective domain is connected to the appreciation and the emotion domain of the learner. And psychomotor domain is related to the motor skills. Thus, the Bloom's taxonomy is a set of three hierarchical models which is used to classify the educational objectives. Here, we will be having an overview on the cognitive domain of Bloom's taxonomy. In this slide, it has been mentioned cognitive domain revised, which means there should be a pre-revised version. Actually, the Bloom's taxonomy was created in 1956 under the leadership of educational psychologist Dr. Benjamin Bloom. His prime focus is to promote higher form of thinking in the field of education. In this pre-revised form, the different levels of learning in the cognitive domain is been presented in the form of verbs. There, in the pre-revised version, the different levels were knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. But in the revised version of 2001, this noun has been replaced by the verbs. There, the learning is said to have be a continuum which happens from remembering, 
understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So what are the different operations which has been happening in these levels will be detailed in the next slide. Here, we will have an in-depth analysis into the various levels of learning in cognitive domain. According to Bloom's taxonomy, the first level of learning in cognitive domain is remembering. This is also termed as memory level of learning, where the learner stores all the impulses that reaches him through the five senses and retrieve it from memory whenever it is needed. The next level is understanding. Here, the learner has been able to understand whatever he has stored in the memory through intellectual apprehension so that he has been able to paraphrase, explain, identify and discuss to some extent. The next level according to cognitive domain is applying. In this level, the learner has been able to use whatever he has learned to a newer situation for solution of his problems. That is, he will be able to take information of an abstract nature and use it in concrete situation. The next level is analyzing. This level is a higher level of applying. In this level, the learner develops the capacity to break down the complex situations into component parts and he'll be able to apply the concept learned into these parts and be able to find out the relationship among them. The next level according to this hierarchy is evaluating. In this level, the learner is being elevated to the level of a judge where the learner has been able to appraise and make judgment on the different area that he has been learned. And the highest level of learning according to the cognitive domain is creating. Here, the learner is being elevated to the position of a discoverer where the learner has been able to find something new. He will be able to put together many disorganized elements or parts to form a whole in a new way. So this gives a very beautiful concept into how the learning should happen. The learner should be able to proceed from remembering level to the create level so that he will be able to contribute something new to the field of knowledge. Here, we will try to understand how the hierarchy operates in the cognitive domain. As we have already discussed, the learning in cognitive domain takes place through six levels, namely remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. So now let us try to find out what is the hierarchy between these levels. So we know that before you can understand a concept, you have to remember it first. So remembering becomes a prerequisite for understanding. To apply a concept, we have to understand it first. So understanding becomes a prerequisite for applying. To evaluate a concept, you have to analyze it first. So analyzing becomes a prerequisite for evaluating. So, to create an accurate conclusion, we must complete a thorough evaluation. So, evaluation becomes a prerequisite for creating. So, now it is evident that learning is a process engineered in such a way that one level is a prerequisite for the other and learning takes place in a continuum. So, now we have gone through the conceptual framework of Bloom's taxonomy. So for an effective teaching and evaluation, these concepts has to be incorporated into practice. So we could conclude that the Bloom's taxonomy gives a skeleton or a wireframe for an effective teaching. Thank you.